So I've been using my lovely new first gen Core i7 computer for two or three weeks now. And I love it, but it has become very clear to me that a new solution needs to be made for the CPU cooler. I don't know if it's because the cooler is undersized or made out of a really poor material or if the clips are broken and it's not making good contact with the CPU or what, but the cooler in this computer is not working when it's idle or lightly loaded the temperature is fine but as soon as you put it under any load immediately after you put it on any uh, heavier load the temperature spikes up past 90 degrees celsius some cores getting up to a hundred degrees celsius according to speedfan if speedfan is to be believed and i can crank all four fans in this computer up to maximum speed i've got a fourth fan in it now it's on the side panel vent uh, doesn't, barely puts a dent in it. It gets so hot, in fact, that the CPU starts throttling itself down, even though I have, uh, I have it set in the BIOS never to throttle down, always to run at full speed, or its full base speed anyway, and then turbo under load. Uh, 3 gigahertz base, uh, it should be going up to 3.3 gigahertz under heavy load. What it's doing instead is underclocking to 2 gigahertz under heavy load to save itself from self-destructing because it's getting up to 100 degrees Celsius. Bad, 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 I need to fix this ASAP. I do not want to burn out the CPU in this computer. Nor do I want to deal with uh, less performance because it's not able to cool itself properly. So, at the recommendation of several viewers, thank you for those who made suggestions, I was convinced not to go with a uh, water cooler, but instead to go with a highly recommended air cooler inside this box purchased from Newegg is a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, very renowned air cooler, very affordable air cooler, uh, 50 bucks after shipping, and that's in Canada where shipping's often quite a lot of money. Um, yeah, thank you to those who recommended this, a lot of you did, I greatly appreciate it, you successfully swayed my vote on what I was going to buy for a cooler. So, I haven't opened the box yet, let's unseal it. Take a look at this cooler, see what it looks like. I'm pretty excited. Ooh, there she be. Four direct contact heat pipes, continuous direct contact, universal mounting. Okay. It lists the LGA 2066 1151 and the AM4. Uh, on the side it does list the LGA 1366, so nothing to worry about there. Okay. Two-year warranty, cool. Okay, let's open it up and see what we get. Oh my goodness, look at this friggin' thing, it's huge! Oh frick, I hope it fits in the case. <laughs> the case is barely wider than a 120 millimeter fan on its own. <laughs> we'll find out, I guess. Uh, might end up cutting a hole in the panel. Uh, if this doesn't fit, I, I might have to consider returning it rather than trying to make it fit but wow that's a nice looking piece of equipment not very heavy look at that heat sink very nice four pin connector on the fan copper contact area and then here's all the hardware we've got the back plate and the mounting X and the plastic things and and a bunch of screws and things, and then plastic little donuts, and the user manual, which I'm definitely going to need, as you could probably tell by the last ten, ten seconds of this video. So, I'm going to read through the user manual, and then after that, I guess the first thing we'll do is shut this thing down, and I'm going to have to get the motherboard. Oh, hmm, do I need to get the motherboard out of there? If I can get this side panel off, I might be able to do it right from the underside, if the underside of the motherboard's exposed, but I'm not sure it is. And also, I think the top 
bottom and this side are all one unit, so maybe it'd be easier just to unplug everything and get the motherboard out of there. We'll see. Here's where we're at so far. I yeeted the motherboard out of the case and then tried going through these instructions and as I figured they're kinda crap. Um, the first thing that hung me up was getting this back plate installed. They show this part D, this collar that goes over each of the nuts and I don't have that part. It's just not in the parts they gave me. It just doesn't exist. Uh, and then I had trouble figuring out what to do with this, uh, this X-shaped thing and how to line that up. I found a uh, YouTube video that has been much more helpful than the instructions that come with the unit. I don't know why they can't just make instructions that make sense, but anyway. I was a little bit worried because the nuts for the back plate stick out quite a bit, you can see. But I checked it in the case and it fits in the case just fine. And I did a quick check of that and I, I believe it will clear the case enough for me to put the side panel back on. So there's where we're at so far. I'm just going to mount this thing and, and hopefully it fits fine. Thermal plate, thermal paste applied. Just a little dab in the center is all you need. Actually, that's probably a little more than you need. Apparently, a lot of people don't know that and think you have to string a great big line across. No, tiny dab in the center. There she is. I super slowly screwed it in, doing each screw little by little in a star pattern until all four screws cause my drill to start skipping. So I'm going to end it there. Heat sink seems like it's reasonably tight. It moves a little bit when I put enough pressure on it, but it's definitely on there pretty darn tight. So I'm going to put the fan on it, put the motherboard back in the computer, hook everything back up, and pray that I didn't do anything wrong. Well, let's find out. Nice. Well, there it is. I think I got everything plugged back in. Might have the power and hard drive LEDs backwards, but that's no issue if I do. And I did test the putting the side panel on. It does go on with like three quarters of an inch to spare, so that's good. I've oriented the fan so that it blows that away towards the uh, case fan. It's plugged into one of the fan headers on my fan controller. Uh, that fan controller was set to the slowest speed, so this thing should uh, go to the, it should turn on to the slowest speed when I turn the computer on. Now I just gotta plug the computer in, see if it works, see what our temperatures look like, and pray that everything is good. Let's find out. There it is, you can see. I had to remove the uh, fan that I had in this spot so it would fit. And fit, it barely does. All right, I really hope I don't have to tear this thing apart again. Wow, I got the LEDs right. Ooh, she's really quiet. I'm gonna go into the BIOS to uh, look at the hardware monitor. Oh, that's good. Oh, thank goodness. Hope I get all the drives in the right SATA ports. Oh, that's good too. New CPU installed. No, it isn't. But I'll play your game. Let's take a look at the temperatures. This is our do or die moment right here. Oh, that looks good. I think. She appears to be stable, around 36. I think she's pretty much stabilized and that's a really good temperature to stabilize at. Let's see uh, what that fan on it sounds like ramped all the way up. Oh, you can barely hear it. You can tell it's going. I wonder if I can feel it blowing out the uh, 
back vent. I can a little bit. Well, all right, let's uh, put her back down to the slow speed, boot her into Windows and see what's good. Run Prime 95, see what it does. Uh, I wonder if my settings are all, because it talked about a new CPU. I wonder if my settings are all screws and screwed up. I don't think so. Well, let's uh, see what happens here. Okay, let's open up speed fan. Man, if this went without a hitch, without me having to uh, tear it all apart to fix something, I'm going to be very happy. Oh, that's, that's pretty darn good. Let's, uh, let's get Prime 95 going. The real do or die moment is going to be if it immediately shoots up to 90 degrees. I don't care if it like slowly gets up to 70 or 75, but as long as it's gradual so I know there's some actual thermal mass happening, right? Okay. Here we go. She's fully loaded. Oh my god, that's so good! That's awesome! Prime 95! At least one core would be at a hundred by now. Oh, that's so awesome! And the fan's on the slowest speed! She's holding low 50s! Dude! That's incredible! Man, best 50 bucks I ever spent! And I'm glad it was 50 bucks for that rather than 80 bucks for the water cooler, which might not have even performed this well. I cannot believe. Let's check our. Let's see if our CPU's in turbo mode. Something it would never do before because it got too hot. Uh, yes, she's turboing. She's up to 3.2 gigahertz. She usually goes up to 3.3, but she ain't throttling down to 2 gigahertz anymore. Ah, oh, now I can now I can start overclocking. This is awesome. Look at that. We're still in the still in the mid 50s. That's what the fan on the slowest speed. Let me just for kicks. Let me crank it up to the highest speed. And remember, I have none of the case fans on yet. The rest of the fans are uh, turned off. CPU fan is now at the high speed. Looks like it's not having too much of an effect. That is sweet though. Oh my goodness, I can actually do stuff and not have to watch the temperature like a hawk. I can render a video and then get up and walk away. Wow, let me turn the fan straight off. I'm just curious. Fan is now off. We're completely fanless now, except for the power supply fan. That is amazing. That massive heat sink makes all the difference. I'll turn the camera off here and leave it a few minutes and just see what it looks like uh, after a few minutes of no fan. Well, we're in the mid-80s now, but it sure took its time getting there, but I have a feeling it would keep climbing eventually up to, well, 85 is already too high, but I have a feeling it would keep climbing if I didn't intervene, so I'm going to crank the fan up all the way. See what it does here. Look at that, it's already starting to drop. I could turn on the face face cam. I could turn on the case fan <laughs> and uh, cool it down even more. But holy cow, it's going really fast. I figured cooling down would take a long time just because of how much heat that heatsink stores. But that fan on it does an incredible job, and it's so quiet. Just for kicks, I'm going to turn on the case fan. There's the case fan going at her. 
I think the case fan's actually hurting. Turn it back off here. Well, maybe not. Didn't seem to make a dent, though. But there you go. Wow. I am so happy and very glad that my viewers, you guys, suggested the uh, this particular cooler to me. And I'm glad that I listened, because <laughs> I can be a bit uh, stubborn about this stuff at times. But uh, that is awesome. So I think that's about it. That was the installation and testing of the new cooler for my desktop computer, the uh, Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. $50, Canadian I should add. If you're American, it's gonna be cheaper. What a value. Uh, definitely get one of these if you're on, in the market for a cooler. Don't pay more for those like Noctua coolers and the other air coolers that are like a hundred dollars uh this thing is half the price of those and as far as i'm concerned it's doing an amazing job so there you go thank you very much for watching i do hope you enjoyed there will be another video of this computer coming when i receive another upgrade that i'm getting for it one that was sent by a viewer i'm really excited for that one but for now, this, this computer is even more awesome than when I got it. Now it's going to be a lot more usable. And I can play around with uh, overclocking. That's going to be fun. So, there you go. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.